Welcome back. I hope you are enjoying the annual meeting thus far and congratulations to the NAE membership class of 2020. I'm Coralie Brierly, the NAE Vice President, and I am pleased to be your MC for this next segment of the meeting, the presentation of the NAE Awards. We'll start with the two oldest and most prestigious NAE Awards. Uh, the first one is the Cy Ramo Founders Award. The other is the Arthur M. Pika Award. The Simon Ramo Founders Award honors an outstanding NAE member or international member who has upheld the ideals and principles of the NAE to professional, educational, and personal achievements. The Founders Award was established in 1965 and renamed in 2012 and endowed by the Keck Foundation in honor of one of NAE's 25 founding members, Simon Ramo, on the occasion of his 100th birthday. Sai passed away in 2016 at the age of 103. The Arthur M. Biko Award recognizes an engineer who has been actively involved in determining US science and technology policy, promoting, promoting technological development and contributing to the enhancement of relations between industry, government, and academia. Dr. Bika was Senior Vice President for Corporate Technology at General Electric and a member of the NAE Council who spoke out for the advancement of engineering and technology. We thank his daughter, Tina Bika, for her continued support of the award. We also greatly appreciate the work of the 2020 awards committee members and chair Christina Johnson, chancellor of the State University of New York at Albany for their work in carrying out the award selection responsibilities, particularly given this year's unusual challenges. And now it gives me great pleasure to announce the recipient of this year's Simon Reno Founders Award, Dr. Francis S. Ligler for the invention and development of portable optical biosensors, service to the nation and profession, and educating the next more diverse generation of engineers. Dr. Liger is the Lampe Distinguished Professor of Biomedical Engineering in the Joint Department of Biomedical Engineering in the College of Engineering at North Carolina State University and the School of Medicine at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She works in the fields of biosensors, microfluidics, optical engineering, and regenerative medicine, and has done research in biochemistry and immunology. Before joining the Joint Department in 2013, she worked for the US Naval Research Laboratory for 28 years. Her inventions have been commercialized to biosensor products used in food production plants, clinics in developing countries, pollution cleanup sites, and areas of concern for military and homeland security. Fran was elected to the NAE in 2005 and served on the council from 2014 to 2020. She has been inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame and is a fellow of the American Institute for Medical and Biological Engineering and the National Academy of Inventors, among others. Among many other awards, in 2012, Dr. Ligler was honored by President Obama with the presidential rank of meritorious senior professional. And in 2003, she was recognized by the Christopher Columbus Foundation with its Homeland Security Award, Biological Radiological Nuclear Field, and by President George W. Bush with the presidential rank of Distinguished Senior Professional. I am delighted to present the Simon Ramo Founders Award to Francis S. Ligler. And now a few words from Fran. Thank you for joining me this afternoon to celebrate the Simon Ramo Founders Award. My first experience at the NAE was on the, this awards committee and I am imagined that it was impossible for anyone to do what the nominees had done in a single lifetime. It would take at least three. 
So I'm particularly humbled to accept this award. I would like to thank the awards committee for selecting me, my nominator and referees for all the work they put into my nomination, for the NAE members for being my friends, and for my mentors, colleagues, friends, and family. I don't do anything by myself, and I need you all. Thank you so much for your help. So as I have listened to the NAE awards over the last 15 years, I very much enjoyed learning about the backgrounds of NAE members and how it affected their priorities and activities. So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into the evolution of Fran Ligler, the engineer. I'm a fifth generation Kentuckian. My great great grandmother came across in a wagon with Daniel Boone, another relative, to settle in Kentucky. My grandmother, lovely Betty Smith, was born in a log cabin in Cox's Creek, Kentucky, and returned to the farm with her four children when she was widowed to bring up her kids in an old farmhouse with no electricity and running water. My father spent his entire career bringing electricity to the farmers of Kentucky. So when I was not reading books about pioneer Americans, I was running around the woods with my hound dog or galloping over the farm with my horse. I wanted to be a forest ranger or a cowgirl, but it was quite natural as my education progressed to go into biology and biochemistry. My professor in biology sent me one summer to work at the Oak Ridge Labs doing uh, research on the growth factors that uh, impact growth in fish, and I was hooked on, on research for the rest of my life. That same summer, I became engaged to a fellow who won a Rhodes Scholarship, and so I worked very hard to get a fellowship to go to Oxford so I could follow the path of true love. After Oxford, I spent five years doing research in biochemistry and immunology in Texas medical schools, but was forced out by the discrimination against women in science. I found an amazing job at DuPont Central Research and Development, where I had tremendous research freedom, was promoted to head of cellular immunology, and had the opportunity to take courses in management of people and projects that served me well for the rest of my life. However, in uh, 1985, I became the youngest retiree in the history of the company. I'm part of a two-career family, and it was George's turn to move for his career. So I picked the job offer in DC that was the weirdest. I accepted a position at the Naval Research Lab in Joel Schnoor's group that was looking at self-assembly of biomolecules to make new materials and systems. I thought playing with molecular tinker toys would be a blast, and so it turned out to be. When I got to the Naval Research Lab, I became very aware of how vulnerable our country was to the threat of biological warfare attack. Rich Thompson and I successfully proposed to build a sensor using antibodies to detect biological warfare agents. At this point, it was time for my alter ego as a Gemini to develop. The astrological sign Gemini, people born in June, is the twin. I had developed the science side, and now I had to develop the engineering side if I was going to make a system that would be used by real people. So I hired postdocs in all fields of engineering to teach me engineering and to fill in the gaps in our sensor systems. I became very uh, aware very quickly that a creative engineer was worth their weight in gold and my postdocs could solve problems in very unique ways. In 2005, I officially graduated to become an engineer. I was proud of thinking like an engineer and being able to do creative problem solving. I also had the opportunity to meet the incredible members of the NAE who opened my world in so many ways. I would really, really, really encourage you to get involved as much as possible in the National Academy of Engineering, to spend time working with the other members and getting to know them, and to making this country and the world 
a better place. Thank you. Congratulations, Fran. We are so proud of you. Next, I am very pleased to announce Dr. Arden L. Bement Jr. as the 2020 recipient of the Arthur M. Bika Award for contributions to science and technology advancement, international relationships, policy development, and academy studies from his executive positions in government, industry, and academia. Dr. Bement is the David A. Ross Distinguished Professor Emeritus of Nuclear Engineering in the College of Engineering at Purdue University. He began his tenure at Purdue in 1993 with joint appointments in the metallurgical engineering and electrical computing engineering departments and was later head of the School of Nuclear Engineering and Chief Global Affairs Officer. During his academic career, he directed three university-wide research programs, the Fusion Technology uh, Research Program at MIT and at Purdue, the Midwest Consortium for High Temperature Superconductivity and the Global Policy Research Institute. He has held appointments under six presidents as director of the Office of Materials Science at DARPA, as De deputy undersecretary of defense for Research and Advanced Technology, and as Director of the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and Director of the National Science Foundation. On behalf of the U.S. State Department, he co-chaired the Science and Technology Committee of the U.S. National Commission for UNESCO. And on behalf of the U.N. International Atomic Energy Agency, he was Technical Advisor for both the National Research Council of Taiwan and Mexico's National Institute of Atomic Energy. In his industrial career, Dr. Bemont worked at the AEC Hanford Laboratories operated by General Electric Company, Pacific Northwest National Laboratory operated by Patel Memorial Institute and TRW. For his achievements in government, industry, and academia, Dr. Bemont has received national and international honors and distinctions including the White House Distinguished Federal Executive Award, the Department of Defense Distinguished Civilian Service Medal, and the Department of Commerce William C. Redmond Award. He was elected to the NAE in 1983 and has been active in a variety of capacities. I am very pleased to present the Arthur M. Bico Award to Dr. Arden L. Bemont, Jr. And now we will have some remarks from Dr. Thank you, Vice President Bradley, for your generous introduction. I wish also to express my thanks to the Bika family and the awards selection committee and President Anderson, who notified me of my selection. This award is especially meaningful to me because it's named for a giant in scientific research, technology commercialization, and R&D policy, Arthur M. Bika. I worked at the GE Hanford Laboratories in Richland, Washington from 1954 to 1964 when Guy Suits was director of the GE Research Laboratory. Although I didn't meet Dr. Pika during that time, I did sit next to him at a banquet shortly before his untimely death in 1981. We spent part of this dinner discussing the satisfaction of working in the space between discovery and application where innovations are seeded. The value of learning by doing and studying successful leaders and the satisfactions that can come from traversing several learning curves during a career. Our discussions encouraged me to continue my career directing R&D programs within the Beacon Triangle at the confluence of industry, university and and uh, government R&D. These partnerships have uh, included advanced energy technologies, advanced materials for space and defense systems, computer integrated design and manufacturing, high-speed integrated circuits, high temperature superconductors, and policy research and development. My 37-year membership in the NAE has greatly reinforced my career path by offering many learning curves. It enabled me to serve on four NRC boards, chair of the National Materials Advisory Board, 
and the Commission for Engineering and Technical Systems, and also to participate in 20 funded studies. Friendships and working relationships I've had with members of the three academies have been a great value to me throughout my career. Since the uh, Rust Belt contraction in the 1960s and 70s, there have been major developments within the Bika Triangle. For example, industries have increasingly located technology development centers and subsidiaries near universities and government labs, both in the US and abroad, to facilitate R&D partnerships and enhance customer relationships. Some government-funded research centers at leading universities now involve multiple collaborating universities and foreign investigators. An increasing number of peer-reviewed journal publications by U.S. researchers are co-authored by international collaborators. Research universities now not only operate research parks, but also innovation centers and foundries for their students to fast prototype their innovations with computer integrated uh, modeling and additive manufacturing. A few leading research universities now can spawn up to 100 new startups per year. And some universities have established faculty and student exchanges with universities abroad in innovation and entrepreneurship. The partnership between MIT and Skokopo Institute of Science and Technology near Moscow is a prime example. These developments and many more have substantially contributed to compressing the transition time from discovery to market to about half or less of what it was 50 years ago. Arthur Bika, who was a steadfast champion of building the nation's economy through the convergence of R&D and the Bubika Triangle, would have been delighted with these outcomes. In closing, I wish to thank the nominators and supporters for my award. My nominator was Norm Augustine, former CEO and chair of Lockheed Martin. My supporters included Craig Barrett, retired CEO and chair of Intel Corporation, Franz Cordova, president emerita of Purdue University and former director of the NSF, Ed Crowley, Ford professor of engineering at MIT and founding president of the Skokovo Institute of Standards and Techno Science and Technology. Richard Mazur, Senior Counsel, Covington and Burling, LLP, former Chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and President Emeritus of the Carnegie Institute for Science. Rash the Mergen, former Acting Director and Chief Scientist of the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and Henry Yang, Chancellor of the University of California at Santa Barbara. My gratitude to these great leaders and admiration for their impacts on our nation's research and development base runs deep. I want to give special thanks to John Grundy of Purdue's College of Engineering, who provided my nominator and supporters with needed information. And to all NAE members, I give special thanks for this wonderful award. Thank you. Congratulations, Arden. Our final presentation today and the first ever presentation of this award during the NAE's annual meeting is the J.C. Hunziker Award in Aeronautical Engineering. Established at the National Academy of Sciences in 1964, through a gift from Professor and Mrs. J.C. Hunziker, the award recognizes an individual who has made distinguished contributions in aeronautical engineering. It is presented every five years and confers a $50,000 cash prize. I thank the 2020 Hunziker Award Committee and Chair Natalie Crawford, Senior Fellow at the RAND Corporation, for their work during these difficult times. And now I am pleased to announce the winner of the 2020 J.C. Hunziker Award in Aeronautical Engineering, Mr. Alan C. Brown for innovative contributions to the design of commercial and military aircraft, and particularly leadership of the team that developed the F-117 stealth fighter. Mr. Brown retired in 1992 as Director of Engineering at Lockheed Corporate Headquarters, where his principal concern was the promulgation of concurrent engineering 
and stealth technology throughout the corporation. He was also a member of the Lockheed Advanced Development Projects, locally known as the Skunk Works. Before that, program manager and chief engineer for the F-117A stealth fighter from initial concept until the first production aircraft. Earlier in his Lockheed career, he worked on propulsion installation on the supersonic transport and the FX and BSX aircraft, which later became the F-15 and S-3A respectively, and on the L-1011 commercial transport program for the Lockheed Group at Rolls-Royce. Since his retirement from Lockheed, Mr. Brown has taught at Cranfield University in England, Linköping University, Sweden, the Georgia Institute of Technology, and the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School. In addition, he was active in the University of California Mathematics, Engineering, and Science Achievement Program for middle and high school girls. Among his honors, Mr. Brown is a member of the NAE and a fellow of the Royal Aeronautical Society and American Institute of Astro Aeronautics and Astronautics. In 1990, he was selected for the AIAA Aircraft Design Award. I am pleased to present the 2020 Hunziker Award to Mr. Alan C. Brown. It is a very great honor to receive the J.C. Hunsaker Award. My first reaction is to note that I've worked at Lockheed with a very talented, hardworking group of engineers, and so I have to comment that one has to be lucky as well as reasonably competent to have been chosen for this award. The luck came in several forms. Lockheed was working on a new program in the Skunk Works known as Have Blue. This was a very low observable research airplane headed up by Dick Scherer at Leo Selnica. I had worked for Leo back in the 60s in advanced design at Lockheed in charge of propulsion integration for new aircraft. And Leo asked me to come over and try to come up with a propulsion system that would have the required low radar cross section and still operate efficiently. The Skunk Works Propulsion Group had not been able to meet requirements. They were looking at SR-71 and D-21 variants, and Leo wanted a fresh look. He figured it would take me about six weeks, and in fact, I stayed at the Skunk Works for 14 years. The next item of luck was good for me and bad for Dick Scherer. Dick suffered a stroke and was sidelined for over a year, and I had to take his place on the design team as the integrator of aircraft design with low observability. The third item of luck came after we'd won the low observable competition with Northrop, at which point the US Air Force wanted to make a military airplane based on the new technology which became the F-117A fighter. That's really an attack aircraft. Colonel Jack Twigg wanted to be sure that the chief engineer was not the typical aerodynamics or structural person, but the person who had the most knowledge of integrating stealth into the aircraft design, and so insisted to Lockheed that I should be put in charge of the airplane design. Lockheed, in the form of Ben Rich, then head of the Skunk Works, agreed, and so I became chief engineer for the airplane. I was fortunate to have two very experienced assistant project engineers in Bill Taylor for systems and Ed Baldwin for structural design assigned to the program, both of whom had long Skunk Works experience and so we were able to produce an airplane in two and a half years from receipt of go-ahead, which was essentially invisible to radar and infrared detection. The fourth item of luck, which demonstrated the aircraft very well, was the Gulf War in 1991. Here the F-117A showed its capability as an attack bomber 
essentially for all the world to see, which wouldn't have happened otherwise. So in conclusion, I thank the National Academy for this award, which I regard as a great honor. Congratulations, Alan. That concludes our presentation of this year's Cy Ramo Founders Award, the Arthur M. Biko Award, and the J.C. Hunsaker Award in Aeronautical Engineering. To view a full bio of the award winners, please visit the awards website at www.nae.edu awards. Congratulations again to Fran Ligler, Arden Bement, and Alan Brown.